I just think that people have an aversion to abstract art because it seems dispassionate to them. It's overly formal. The marks are the meaning, and if you can express what you are trying to say without illustration and just having marks and proportions of color and shape and weight and line and space, I think you appeal to a more primal place in people. Who ever said that the tags in museums were sent down by God? It's all interpretation. I always say I'm a stripe painter because you could call it whatever you want. People will say, you know, the stripe painter. So uh, I do stripe paintings. I would differentiate them from the, the great history of stripe painters before me, uh, that it's not hard edged, it's more organic. It stops and starts and gets lost and comes back. And there's a struggle between surface and deep space in these that you wouldn't find in, say, Bridget Riley's work. A big part of the interest for this work is that it plays not only with surface quality and deep space, but it also plays with sort of chaos and organization. I've ruined all the ends of these brushes, so now I'm using the other end just to mix paint. Oil paint is sexy. There's no getting around that. It feels great to move around. It has the quality of taking on different personalities. It's luscious. It's the color of it, the texture, the creaminess of it. I can't really imagine working with anything else. You know, they don't have to go top to bottom. They have more of a motion feeling when they're not side to side. I've always loved art, but I did not conceive of that as something to go into as a vocation. I never believed that a woman from the Midwest, from a small town, could be an artist. I always sensed that that was something that happened in New York with men, uh, men like Jackson Pollock. The paintings start with something as simple as, I feel like green today, and that's what, go that's what goes down first. You know, I divide it up with white, and then you look at what green and white look like, and then pretty soon you're thinking, oh, Degas had those great race pictures, and then he had those deep brown and black race horses, and let's try the browns. And, and then you let it sit for a few days, and you come back and you think, wow, it's, it's kind of boring. And you know, you, you, hot pink goes in. You know, it's, it's just like that. It's flying by the seat of your pants. All the paintings are made using gravity to assist me. And I originally had a T-square that would sit on the top of the painting and I'd move it. A friend of mine rigged up this, these roller skate wheels on a T-square and built this track. And uh, now I can move the work up and down. I can add to it and do longer pieces. When I turn it this way, the emphasis is completely changed. The, the excitement's all up at the beginning rather than at the end. And if you were to keep it this way, you'd have to do something because your eye just wants to like go right off the end there. There's nothing to hold you over there. I wouldn't put it past this being interesting as a horizontal too. That's a nice proportion with the small orange and then the, the yellow as sort of a base. I've actually put arrows in two directions on some of these, letting people know, I like it like this, I like it like this, you know? These are are some prints that I'm working on, monoprints. I was reintroduced to printmaking after starting with it 15, 16 years ago by High Point. I'm using plexiglass and putting marks down on the plexi and scraping and using solvent. They're not finished. Neither of these are finished. It's informing my paintings and vice versa. It gives me something to step away from the canvas for. And I'm not trying to make my paintings on paper. I'm just seeing what happens, doing what I do, and then it's really fun to be an absolute beginner at something. I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes. I find abstract art very democratic because it doesn't carry imagery that is particular to a socioeconomic group. It has all the basic, it's the bare bones of the things that we live with. 
because we're sort of hardwired to some of these things. You're hardwired to color through through generations of being in your culture, red and yellow having very distinct properties of, you know, passion, uh, fire, destruction, blue being meditative, uh, quieter, um, also always having a strong relation to sky and water. I think the vertical stripes are very reminiscent of, of doorways, passageways, windows, uh, places that you can see behind, they make sections. If you just look at what's there and allow yourself to feel it, I think you'll have a much easier and more enjoyable time than if you're trying to figure out what it means. Minnesota Original is made possible by the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.